of mysticism conversation with bhagwan shri ramna maharishi devotee asked is it harmless to keep on with smoking maharishi said no for tobacco is a poison better to do without it then devotee asked what are the passions maharishi said they are the same force as is used in meditation only diverted into other channels then devotee asked do you recommend that meat and alcoholic drinks be given up maharishi said yes it is as advisable to give them up because this abstention is a useful aid for beginners the difficulty in surrendering them is not that they are really necessary but merely because we have become inured to them by custom and habit to them till the mind is firm in realization it must have some picture or idea to think of else the meditation will quickly give place to sleep or wandering thoughts yes meditation in early morning upon arising is the best time because mind is then free of thoughts cares etc regarding meditation in a group or alone the latter is advisable for beginners but we must learn to advance to the point where we create our mental solitude then it doesn't matter where we are we must learn to find solitude mentally in the midst of society we should not give up our meditation because we are among people but carry it on even then gently do it secretly inwardly do not make a physical exhibition of the fact that you are meditating when attention is directed towards objects and intellect mind is aware only of these things that is our present state but when we attend to the self within we become conscious of it alone it is therefore all a matter of attention our mind has for so long been attending to external things that the later have enslaved it and dragged it hither and thither devotee as it is said that the yogi should sit on a bear skin for meditation as this prevents loss of magnetism during meditation then maharishi said it is not necessary to use one that will not rob you of the effects of your meditation because you do not happen to use a bear skin it is good that you have given up smoking men are enslaved by tobacco and cannot give it up but tobacco only gives a temporary addiction to which there must be a reaction with craving for more it is also not good for meditation practice if the mind wanders we must at once realize we are not the body and inquire who am i and the mind must be brought back to realize the self thus all evils are destroyed and happiness is realized you can meditate with eyes open or shut whichever suits you best it differs with different people the real sight is when the mind looks through the eyes if it is not looking through them because it is occupied with some interior things it doesn't see though the eyes are open similarly noises if you pay attention to them you hear them but if you persistently pay attention only to the self within you will not hear them devotee asked the mind is fickle and wandering how to control it then maharishi said if you at once direct your attention to the question who is the individual to whom this fickleness occurs the tossing of the mind to and fro ceases there is a subtle essence in all food it is this which affects the mind hence for those 
who are endeavoring to practice meditation to find the self there have been didactic rules laid down which it is advisable to follow sattvic pure foods promote meditation whereas rajasik active excitable meat and tamasic dull food hinder it then the body asked how are lust anger etc overcome marishi said by dhyana that is by the holding on to a single thought and putting off all other thoughts then devati asked what is to be meditated on marishi said anything you prefer but you should stick to one thing contemplation means fight as soon as you begin meditation other thoughts will crowd in gather force and try to sink the single thought the later must gain strength by repeated practice this battle always takes place in meditation peace of mind is brought about by contemplation through the absence of varying thoughts when dhyana is well established it cannot be given up it will go on automatically even when you are engaged in work play or even sleep it must become so deep rooted that it is natural devotee asked is heart the same as the psychological heart mary she said no it is all meant to help the aspirant it is only the source of the i thought that is the ultimate truth seek your source the search takes you automatically to the heart by yogic practice one starts with the lowest chakra wheel or center goes down and then rises up wanders all through until the brain center or the thousand petal lotus is gained by gyana practice one settles down in the heart center directly the heart chakra of yogis called anahata traditionally the fourth chakra on the sushmana or central subtle channel centered in the middle of the chest is not the same as the heart if so why should they progress further on to sahasra the seventh and topmost subtle center located in the crown of the head moreover the question arises because of the sense of separateness persisting in us we are never away from that center before reaching anahata or after passing it one is only in the center whether one understands it or not one is not away from the center practice of yoga or vichara remains in the center only what is pranayama devotee asked maharishi said prana is equivalent to self soul atma etc as it is the life current or whatever name you give it pranayama is the control of the body the senses and the intellect through the breath mind is thus controlled and thus lies down with this practice mind and prana originates from the same source by control of breath the mind subsides and then an unconscious blank state is produced a swoon or trance like death although that state is the natural state the man who has not controlled the mind is dazed and is merged in it it is a state of great peace too but it is temporary and when it ends the yogi wants to get it back again and so he does his breath control again it is necessary for him to go beyond pranayama and to gain direct control of the mind and thus practice a permanent peace sahaj samadhi not merely temporary samadhi the thing is to get the capacity to bring mind to peace to make it still and not allow it to wander for that pranayama is given out as instruction retention of breath leads to contemplation 
but that is for the advanced man. Puraka inhalation is the beginning, then comes Kumbhaka retention, the last Rechaka exhalation. Pranayama is useful only in so far as it helps to get mind control. For those who seek mental peace, this is enough, but there is a highly detailed complicated pranayama for those who seek siddhis, occult powers. Pranayama is for one not endowed with the strength to control the mind. There is no way so sure as the sages company for this purpose. Pranayama need not be exactly as described in Hatha Yoga if engaged in devotion or meditation just a little control of breath will suffice to control mind mind is the rider and breath is the horse pranayama is a check on the horse but the check the rider is checked it may be done just a little watching the breath is one way to do it the mind is abstracted from other activities and engaged in watching the breath that controls breath and it its turn the mind. If you are unable to do Rechaka and Puraka, it does not matter. Breath may be retained for a short while during meditation, then two good results will accrue. Regulation of breath is gained by watching its movements. Similarly, if the mind is washed, the thoughts will cease too. That is what the mind quest really is. Some meditation brings about suspension of the breath while vice versa the mind ceases to be restless after some breath control. Control of mind spontaneously effects control of breath or kumbhaka. The persons who use breath control especially are those who are practicing by themselves Without a guru's presence, then the mind becomes controlled as a result, but mind control spontaneously begins to arise in the absence of a superior power like a guru. When life is imperiled, the whole interest begins to center round saving it. Similarly, when the breath is held in pranayama, the mind cannot afford to jump at its accustomed external objects. Thus, there is rest for it so long as the breath is held since all attention is being turned on the breath and its regulation. Other interests are lost. Thought and respiration are both different aspects of the same individual life currents upon which both depend. If respiration is forcibly repressed, thought follows suit and is fixed to the usual dominant thought. If thought is forcibly slowed down and fine to a point, the vital activity of respiration is slowed down, made even and confined to the lowest level compatible with the continuance of life. Thus, the mind grasps the subtle and merges into it. Control of breath calms the mind. Then see who is aware of the calmness. Mechanical pranayama will not lead one to the goal. It is only an aid. While doing it mechanically, take care to be alert in the mind and remember that I thought and seek its source. Then you will find that where prana sings, there the I thought arises, they sink and arise together. The I thought also will sink along with the prana. Simultaneously, another luminous and infinite I, I will manifest and it will be continuous and unbroken. That is the goal. It goes by different names, God, Bhakti, Jnana, etc. When the attempt is made, it will of itself take you to the goal. Hari Om Tat Sat.